Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson on multiple choice comprehension. Ah, I'm going to need that. So this week we are finishing off the um, comprehension questions in the rocket multiple choice paper that we've worked on in a couple of previous lessons. And you can see, well, I'll be linking them in, in the comments underneath the video if you haven't seen them already. And don't forget that the worksheet for today's lesson is linked in the video description. I can see the comments coming in. Um, hey, Dreamy the Half Fox Girl, good username. Um, hello, Harley, um, how do I win a pencil case? Uh, the pencil cases haven't arrived yet, so you'd struggle to win one because I can't give you one. Um, but you win pens, of course, by making really good contributions. Uh, hello, Hannah. Thank you for your really kind comments. Um, shout out to Dara. Blah, blah, blah. I can't do all the shout outs, I'm afraid, because we're going to have to get cracking with the lesson. So, um, we're going to be carrying on from question 17 of the worksheet. And again, if you don't have it yet, it might be worth printing out the worksheet linked in the video description so that you can see the text as we go through the questions here. Uh, and I'm going to be focusing on the kind of technique that you need as you do these kinds of comprehension questions, because of course, that's the crucial thing here, not the particular answers. Bear in mind that this is a very difficult comprehension. Many of them aren't this hard, but that's one reason that I think it's good practice. Okay, so question 17, how successful was the Liverpool and Manchester Railway? And if we go back into the text, um, if you've been working through the previous questions, you'd realise that we've dealt with this section here. And we're now into this section from here, and the answer is likely to turn up somewhere here. And in fact, we can see that although the Liverpool and Manchester Railway was tremendously successful, its grand opening was a disaster. So we go back into the options. It was supposed to be a success, but things went badly wrong. Okay. It was a disaster. The company collapsed because of the railway's double opening day, very specific. It wasn't successful initially, but things got much better. It was very successful. So there were lots of ideas there that might relate to the opening being a disaster. Let's go back to the text. And it says that although the grand opening was a disaster, no, although the opening, although, although the railway was tremendously successful, the opening was a disaster. But it still says that the railway was successful. So that is the answer. It was very successful. All the other options here aren't quite right. It was supposed to be a tremendous success. No, it was a tremendous success. The passage says so. You can't argue with that. It was a disaster. The opening was, but not the railway. The company collapsed. No evidence of that. If you read on, that'll be clear. It wasn't successful initially, but things got much better. Well, there's some truth in that, as far as it wasn't successful on the opening day, that was a disaster. But in fact, the passage says that it was successful. It doesn't qualify that. So definitely E, it was successful. Um, we've got some formulae for the areas of um, uh, areas of squares and rectangles and triangles uh, turning up in the comments, not directly relevant, but as they're there, I want to point out they aren't quite right. Uh, sorry, Apple. Um, you've written A equals 12BH. Uh, absolutely not. The area of a triangle is not 12 times the base times the height. It is half times the base times the height, which is very different. Um, anyway, English today, not maths. Okay, that's 17 dealt with, and we're flying. Question 18. By the way, we're going up to question, what is it? Question, ho, ho, ho. Yes, okay, so I want to finish question 26. I'm not going to go on to these questions here because I've actually already dealt with these in some other short videos, which I'll again, I'll link after the lesson. So we're just going up to there and let's see whether we can move through quite quickly and get all that done without taking hours and hours and hours. By the way, anyone who's been working on their mnemonics from last week's lesson have them ready. I'll be talking about those in the tip of the week slot a bit later on. 18. Which of these options best describes William Huskisson's career, according to the passage? So, we're going to kind of quickly skim the options to get a sense of what we're looking for, to get a sense of where we're looking in the passage, and we're going to look at the passage. So, um, great difference to deliver Liverpool's lies, to do with the trade, slave, slave trade, to do with trade and slavery. Okay, we get the idea. Let's look for those ideas in the text. So, it's just about identifying where we're going. So, in fact, it's the next thing he's referred to, the Member of Parliament for Liverpool, William Huskisson, who is remembered as a, pioneer, as a pioneer in the development of modern international trade, though, let's go for a different colour, though his legacy is at best mixed with regard to slavery, another great controversy of the age. Okay, so that's where we're talking about the ideas in the question. 
So he was a pioneer in the development of modern international trade. Even if you aren't certain what the word pioneer means, you can probably spot that this is positive, that he had some kind of positive influence on modern international trade. Though his legacy is at best mixed with regard to slavery. A lot of words there, but the word though gives you most of what you should need to know, that it's good with regards to international trade and not so good with regard to slavery. How far does that get us? So he made a great difference to the lives of Liverpudlians, doesn't seem to turn up. He was a pioneer of the slave trade. No, the text says that he was a pioneer in the development of modern international trade, not the slave trade, or not specifically. Uh, so that is irrelevant. He is famous for expanding trade and reforming slavery, maybe. Although his effect on slavery wasn't entirely praiseworthy, he made important contributions to trade. That might fit. He owned slaves but did not to, a lot to develop modern trade. Quickly check in the passage. Nothing about him owning slaves. We simply don't know from that whether he owned slaves. So he's famous for expanding trade and reforming slavery or not great with slavery but good for trade. Let's go back here. So he was a pioneer in developing modern international trade, although at best he was affected with mixed with regard to slavery. Okay, so it's pretty clear where this is going. Um, there's nothing to suggest he did reform slavery. That would be an and, not a though. That would be two good things together. Here it's saying not entirely praiseworthy with regard to slavery. That matches mixed. He made important contributions to trade, which seems to match him being a pioneer. So there we are. It seems to be D that is our answer. Actually, my crossing out here is not very good because it looks pretty like I'm selecting those things. Um, there we are. That's better. It's clearer. Okay. Um, Vingaudis Ralinaitis, um, a Lithuanian name if I'm not mistaken, uh, says, it is blurry for me. That is probably because you have a too low a quality setting on YouTube. So go into the just below the bottom right hand corner of the video and there'll be a cog a wheel with teeth. Click on that and there'll be an option for quality and set it as high as you can and then you should find that it isn't blurry. Okay, um, which of the following statements is most accurate based only on the information in the passage? Huskinson, ah this is all about Huskinson being killed. Okay, let's read about Huskinson being killed before we come to these. So this is yeah, it's a bit grim and grisly. It's about a person dying. Then again, it's about something that happened a very, very, very long time ago. So we can look at it, hopefully, without um, too much distress. Um, but yeah, there's an important warning here, which is um, don't make stupid decisions on a railway line and do as you're told. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, became, so Huskinson, blah, 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 became, last word of that column, let's scroll up, the first widely reported victim of a fatal railway accident. Okay, before we go on, let's see whether that's what we need is. Ah, it might be, first person. Okay, so the first widely reported victim of a fatal railway accident. First person to be killed in a railway accident. Now, he was the first widely reported victim, which doesn't necessarily mean he was the first victim. Huskinson was the first person to be famous for being hurt by a train. Well, I mean, he, I suppose he was famous for being hurt by a train, but the text says that he was the first widely reported victim. So the fact he was a victim was widely reported. The passage doesn't tell us he was famous for being hurt by the train. In fact, the passage makes clear he was also famous for being a politician, for being an MP, for his contributions to international trade, perhaps for his influence on slavery, uh, but the passage doesn't really explore that. So, um, so it doesn't suggest he was famous for being hurt by a train, it suggests he was famous for various things, but his death was widely reported. So almost, but probably not quite. Huskinson's was the first well-known death on a railway. The, he was the first widely reported victim of a fatal railway accident. That does seem to fit. Oops, throwing my, throwing my pen around. Talking of pens, talk to you in a second. But anyway, um, Huskinson was the first well-known person to be killed on a railway. 
No, it says he was the first widely reported victim, not he was the first famous person who was a victim. It's saying the fact he was a victim was widely reported. So this may be true, it probably is true, but it isn't exactly what the passage says. Huskinson was the first well-known person to be injured on a railway. It says fatal railway accident, so you probably know that fatal means deadly, that killed him. And even if you didn't know that, if you read on through the text, which you will have done before answering the questions, you'll know that he died. So injured is just wrong. So we're left with B, first person famous for being hurt by a train. Kind of, but he was famous anyway. First well-known death on a railway really matches the first widely reported victim of a fatal railway accident. So this is really hard, this question, because there are so many options here that kind of almost are right, or are partly right, or are kind of right if you look at them from a certain point of view. But only C absolutely nails it when you go to the passage. Time for some coffee. Always remember, if when you're reading something aloud, you can stop for a sip of coffee, that means a full stop. And if you couldn't, it probably means a comma. Useful punctuation advice. To see the relevance of that, go to my video from a few months ago now on punctuation. I think it's still one of the most useful uh, live lessons that I've done in this channel. It's the one where I'm, I'm holding a big blue um, apostrophe or comma, I think. Uh, you can see on the cover, that's what I'm doing. Right, anyway, uh, I'm just going to cut to the main camera for a second. Here we are the slickness of my production, because it's time to show you, I think once again I've shown you before, sorry it's flipped round because my, my view flips for my convenience, um, but Easy 11 Plus pens, which do not show Easy 11 Plus the wrong way around, as I said, it's just the camera effect, um, and you can see me on there saying, can you see it? Uh, no, it's a bit too close to the camera, but it's saying, uh, it's saying live on YouTube at six o'clock every Tuesday and there's me looking angry, and there's the Easy 11 Plus logo. And there's a lovely colour of blue, and also the pen writes rather nicely. It's actually quite a comfortable pen to hold, and it writes really well. I wasn't really expecting that one out of them, so that's really pleasing for me. So if you want this to make your pencil case elegant and make you the envy of all your classmates, then contribute something good on the channel and get an Easy 11 Plus pen. And I'm also, I know I said this before, I haven't done it yet. I will aim to do it tomorrow if I possibly can. Um, this is my to-do list. I'm going to add pen to website shop. There we are. So I'll set that up so that you can actually go and buy one if you uh, if you just want to get one quickly. Okay, there we are. That's that done. Onwards with the lesson. So that's the Easy 11 Plus pen. Um, someone says they haven't got their pen that they earned. Uh, well, it's been posted to you. If it doesn't arrive in the next week or so, then get in touch again and I'll resend. Okay, back to the questions. So, um, according to the passage, what caused the accident? Oh, he's crossing out, look too much like answers, sorry. There we are. Okay, so this is tricky. Let's go and read about the accident. So Huskinson was traveling, we're in the right-hand column here, we're starting about here. Huskinson was traveling in a special train drawn by the locomotive Northumbrian which stopped to take on water for its boiler. Okay, so he was in a special train the day of the opening of the railway, so it's lots of celebrities and politicians and so on. In fact, it's very topical because wasn't it this morning there was the opening of the new Elizabeth line in London. And again, there were all these, fo there were all these photos in the newspapers of politicians and so on, on the first train, stopping to take selfies and passengers and all that nauseating politicking anyway uh, so in fact as it occurs to me this is kind of relevant um, but anyway this is one of those special trains for the day of the opening of the railway so just like that um, so again strict instructions the passengers got out when uh, the locomotive Northumbrian stopped okay so they were told not to but they got out anyway and then train drawn by rocket was approaching in the other direction so there are two tracks here Northumbrian has stopped on this track and then coming the other way is a tra another train with rocket leading it Or I suppose we should be going because they're clapping along the tracks in a kind of um, sort of Monty Python-esque fashion. Ignore me. Because he had some mobility difficulties, okay, what does that mean? He had mobility difficulties. Huskinson was less able to get out of the way than were the other passengers, okay? So he had trouble moving and so he couldn't get out of the way as well. Um, 
Rather than just standing where he was, there would have been enough space between the trains, he panicked and tried to climb back into a carriage. So you can imagine him, he's but there, he's between the train tracks. If he just stayed there, the train would go past without problem. But he gets scared because of this thing flying towards him at what in those days would have seemed like an enormous speed, even if 30 miles an hour or so wouldn't seem that fast these days. Still quite fast, though, if you've got something as massive as a locomotive coming towards you. He panicked and tried to climb back up. The door swung open with him holding onto it. So like it's sort of barn doored, you might say. And he was left dangling him directly in front of the oncoming rocket, which struck him. So you imagine he's climbed back into the carriage, tries to pull the door open, and instead the door swings open, he's hanging on it, and he's dangled over the other track where the train's coming along. Crunch. So really horrible, terrifying. Um, but quite a lot of information there. OK, let's go back to the questions. So what caused the accident? The rocket was travelling too fast. Nothing that we've read there says anything about rocket speed, let alone that it was too fast. So that it says according to the passage what caused the accident, not according to your guess. So A is therefore a wrong answer because there was simply nothing in the passage is suggested. The behaviour of the other passengers. So we look at the text. We can see that, line 41, against strict instructions the passengers got out. Okay. So there's all these people crowding on the tracks. So that is kind of true, that the behaviour of the passengers. But I'm drawn to this word other. Always look in detail at the wording of these things. The behaviour of the other passengers. He's one of them. He ignores the instructions as well. He is just as much at fault. So I don't think this can really be the answer. Because it's not the other passengers, it's all of the passengers, including him. So unless it's a badly written question, this shouldn't be the right answer. I guess it's vaguely possible, I put brackets around it so as not to rule it out, but I don't think so. The lack of space between the train tracks. Hang on, I remember the passage. It says that, in fact I've got it on the right even though I can't show it at the same time, um, it says there would have been enough space between the trains. So lack of space did not cause it, there was enough space. That's a wrong answer. Passengers didn't do what they were told. And Huskisson judged the situation badly. Passengers didn't do what they were told, that's right, not the other passengers, all the passengers including him, and he just judged the situation badly. Well, if he judged it well, he would not have got out, and when he was caught in that situation, he would just have stood in the gap and let the train go past. Instead, he scrambled around like a fool, grabbed the door and swung out and got killed. So he certainly judged the situation badly. So this looks right to me. E, Huskisson's disability. Well, hang on, it says he had mobility difficulties, so E is also right, D and E are both right. Which is the better answer? Well, did his disability cause the accident? I don't think so. If he hadn't got out, then he wouldn't have got stuck there, despite the fact he wasn't a good mover. Having already got out, he wouldn't have got struck if he just stayed standing where he was. So although the fact that he was um, a little, little bit disabled, had difficulty moving, was a contributing factor, it made things worse for him, it was not the cause of the accident, really. It was just a sort of mild contributing factor. The real causes were that the passengers just ignored instructions and thought they could just wander over the railway tracks like a load of idiot lemmings, and that Huskinson made a really poor decision. So D is definitely the better answer. Now remember this, this is really important. Your task with multiple choice comprehension, in fact, this is a main screen one. In fact, this is a main screen with music one, it's that important. Your task when you're doing multiple choice comprehension is not to find the right answer. Your task is to find the best answer. Because it will quite often happen that there is more than one answer that either is or could be, or you know might be from a certain point of view, right. But you need to find the one that is best. Okay? We come back into here and E, although it is correct that it is a cause, it is not the best answer. D deals with all the things we're told much better. I'm delighted by all the people in the comments um, getting the correct answer. I think that's really difficult. Um, uh, oh yeah, so this is really relevant. Actually, Daniel has asked a really good question further up. He said, in the text it says his disability, but it also says the the passengers would not listen. So is it D and E? And the answer is yes, it is D and E, but you can only choose one. So you have to choose the better one, and that has to be D. 
So even though E is in a way correct, if you chose E, you will be marked wrong. That is how these work. If you chose D and E, you will be marked wrong. That is how these things work. You get one answer unless you're told otherwise. And that must be the best answer according to the question setter. Okay, so really important multiple choice skills. Right, okay, question 21. How did Huskins' tragic death influence the development of rail travel according to the text? Let's see whether we can find this before we look at all the options, um, because it'll save us a bit of time, and saving time is important in exams. So, we go down. So we've just read about what happened. And then we've got, here we are. That's a nice colour. Huskinson's, mis Huskinson's misfortune greatly increased interest in the railway's opening. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily tell us how it changed rail travel, but it does tell us that it made people more interested in reading about and hearing about and chatting about this opening day. Okay, next sentence. Ironically, it drew the public's attention to the exciting possibility of rapid travel. Okay. So it drew the public's attention to the exciting possibilities. Even if you can't understand every word in that sentence, it drew their attention and exciting, exciting is a positive word. If you get nothing else from this sentence, exciting should be a clue that there's something positive going on here. Okay, what does it really mean? Well, it drew the public's attention, it made them notice that really fast travel was possible. Why would it do this? Newspapers are going, famous politician, in horrific death incident. Wouldn't that make people go, I'm not going on trains, they're dangerous. Well, what do people notice? He was actually killed by being struck by this thing that he couldn't get out of the way of. And what does that prove? It proves it's really, really, really fast by their standards. And people think, wow, if he could get killed in this way, this must be a really, really fast form of travel that's going to change the world. I want some of that. That's why I'm going to go on my next holiday. So, kind of counterintuitive, but it also kind of makes sense as well. It doesn't mean they don't care about him being killed, but what sticks in people's minds and what, what affects their behaviour? Then the sentence goes on and says, but it also offered a useful warning about the dangers involved. So, yeah, get on trains, travel around, it's fantastic, but don't go wandering across the tracks like a numpty. Right, back into the questions. It scared people off railway travel. No, it did not. The opposite. It made people want to travel by rail because it made them more aware of the possibility. That seems to be right. I like that one. Yeah. Created ironic interest from the public. Ooh, the passage did use the word ironic. Is this right too? Ironically, it drew the public's attention. Ah, no. It doesn't say that the public were being ironic. They weren't like raising an eyebrow and snickering a bit as they talked about it. I mean, maybe they were, but the passage doesn't tell us that. It's saying it is ironic for us that despite the horrible accident, people still wanted all the more to travel by rail. So it didn't create ironic interest from the public. Ironically, it created interest from the public. Do you see the difference? Where you put the word ironic, and whether you treat it as an adverb or an adjective as well, I guess, changes the meaning here. And C, while it's very close to the wording of the passage, is not quite what the text says. Now this, I said this is a very difficult comprehension. This is the kind of thing. This is really difficult, not only because the difference is so subtle, but because you have to understand what's going on with the word irony, which is in itself difficult to understand. So this is a very, very advanced comprehension exercise. Do not be distressed if you got a lot of these wrong. Okay? It's okay. The main thing is that you learn from the techniques I'm teaching you. And then when you go in and do some comprehensions that are maybe a little bit less difficult than this, you'll be absolutely on fire. So don't panic. Ah, I've done huge amounts of admin and business accounts and everything over the last couple of days. So this coffee is absolutely essential. And frankly, teaching you and spending time with you here working on these questions is a really nice break from all that stuff. I'm actually kind of enjoying this, even though it is Multiple choice comprehension. Uh, well, at least, at least it isn't non-verbal reasoning. You know what I think about non-verbal reasoning. Right, um, I actually considered doing some reasoning tonight and I thought, no, no, I really, really, really don't feel like doing that. Okay, um, D, it may be more interested in reading about rail accidents, maybe, um, but it doesn't say that. Distracted people from the dangers of rail travel. Mm, 
Well, I mean, it's not really clear, but the passage says it offered a useful warning. So that kind of implies the opposite. So D and E maybe, but I mean B is just absolutely spot on. Again, it's clearly the best answer. On to question 22. Excuse me, I'm just going to open the window here uh, because I'm getting really, really hot. You may say, well, it's not that hot a day, but the thing is, I'm sitting here. If I could turn the camera, well, I could turn the camera around, but then I wouldn't get it right again. If I turn the camera around, you see I've got this great big ring light some full strength baking me from the front. I've got this light at the side baking me from the side. So all told, I'm getting pretty hot here. So anyway, window open. Oh, that's nice actually. <sighs> yeah, that feels a lot better. Right, okay. Um, time to carry on with the questions. When did Rocket finish operating and go into the passage? Let's have a look at the passage. So again, you see the, what I'm going through here. I'm finding out enough from the question to be able to find where the information is in the text. Then I find where the information is. Then I'm checking the question again to see actually what I'm looking for. So I'm kind of going to and fro, to and fro. And that's often more efficient, takes less time than trying to look at the question, learn everything, then remember it while I read the passage and so on. Flick, 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 it suits me. Uh, you'll find your own techniques. But basically, be prepared to go between the question and the text a lot. And certainly, oh yeah, another camera with music moment. Do not rely on your first reading of the text to answer the questions. Do not just read the text and then go through all the questions answering them all. You need to check the text again for virtually every question and probably several times during each question. OK, right. So what are we looking at here? Rocket only operated for a few more years, but its direct descendants ran regular journeys on the British railway network until 1968. Okay. Um, so Rocket only operated for a few years, but its direct descendants, what's a descendant? Ran regular railway journeys on the British railway network until 1968. When did Rocket finish operating? Not made clear by the passage. The 1840s, the 1830s. What does a few more years mean? 1829, that's really specific. That's not a few anything. 1968, that's Rocket's descendants. So trains based on the design of Rocket, like Rocket's offspring, you could say, you know, grandchildren and great-grandchildren and so on. But, no. We're not told anything that makes the date clear. It has to be not made clear by the passage because we're just told a few more years, and that's as vague as vague can be. Okay, uh, Dreamy the Half Fox Girl, no, 1968, because it said that in the text. So you have conveniently shown us what it looks like to fall into a massive trap, okay? Um, because it says that the descendants of Rocket operated until 1968. So don't just go, oh yeah, that date appears in the text, that must be the answer consolation prize because you were brave enough to post your comment here um, post your answer here even though it wasn't correct and to give your reasoning so I could comment on it and you were prepared to let yourself be criticized I love it when people do that when they're prepared to put themselves out there even if it isn't right and that means that ironically for your wrong answer I think you earn a pen so dreamy the half fox girl whoever you really are send me an email that means use the contact form on the RSL educational website links in the comments um, links in the video description um, and let me know your name and address and I will post you a pen so that you can continue to work on your comprehension, but in greater style. Uh, people stop being rude to each other, please. Um, come on. Uh, be nice. I did actually have it was an email from the parent this week saying that my daughter doesn't like watching your lessons because people spend too much time fighting each other in the comments and she finds it distressing. So if you consider, if you're thinking of being a little bit rude to somebody in the comments, maybe stop and think about people like that who just want to concentrate on the lesson, please. Thank you. Um, Onwards, question 23. Okay, different kind of question. The following questions relate to the meanings of words as they are used in the text. As they are used in the text, okay? So important. Words often have more than one possible meaning, okay? So if you give a meaning that could be a right meaning, for, a meaning of that word, but is not how it's used in the passage, you will be wrong. You must check the text to see how it's being used there, okay? So important. I think that's really obvious, except that 
So many people make this mistake, obviously it isn't, okay? Just because you think you know what the word means does not mean you don't check the text. Thank you. Right. Prototype, line three, okay? So let's look at the text. Prototype in line three. Back up all the way to the top to where we were in the first of these rocket lessons. Rocket is famous as a revolutionary design in the history of transport. It was the prototype which won the 1829 competition for steam locomotives to power the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, the Busman Railway. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So it was the prototype which won the competition. Which should really be that there, but never mind. Bad Robert. Um, okay. What does the word prototype mean? It was the prototype. So Rocket was the prototype which won the competition. Steam locomotive. Suppose it could be. The sentence says it was the prototype which won the competition for steam locomotives to power. So it was a steam locomotive which won the steam locomotive. So you wouldn't want to repeat steam locomotive, so I suppose you could use another word, but then you wouldn't really need to, because if you look at the sentence, you could just say, it won the 1839 competition for steam locomotives. If you wanted to say steam locomotives, you actually could just miss out that first part of the sentence completely. So, oops. So steam locomotive would fit in the sentence, I guess, but it would be a weird bit of meaning. There's no reason for the writer to write it. The first version of an invention. So it was the first version of an invention which won the 1829 competition for steam locomotives. That would make sense. So it's the first version. They put that into the competition. And then if it does well, they might make more. So that would make sense. That's plausible. A copy. Why would it be a copy? A copy of what? Why would you enter the copy of someone else's locomotive for this competition? Then surely they would enter it as well. And it doesn't really work. It doesn't seem very likely. A new idea. It was the new idea. That would make sense. It was the revolution which won the 1829 competition. Hmm, that kind of fits too. So B, D or E all kind of work. Sometimes you just have to know, unfortunately. You have to know that prototype means the first version of an invention that you make to test it, to see how well it works, and then maybe you make improvements before you then actually build production models. So if you're designing a new aeroplane, new car, new whatever, new typewriter, um, that would make sense, we don't use typewriters anymore, new microphone, you make one, test it, see what people think of it, see why you can improve it, that's your pro that's a prototype, and then eventually you actually start making hundreds of them to sell. Okay, so what we've done here, we've reduced our options as far as we can, we're still left with with three or three or maybe four sadly that's still better than guessing between five but then you either know or you have to guess between those sometimes it's just like that i try to show you how to work things out but sometimes you really can't okay onwards the word innovations line 59 can most accurately be replaced by surprises tinkerings new improvements better okay i can't show you both but i can read to you what it says 59 uh so all about what the the wing locomotive needed to be fast and reliable but didn't need to tow huge loads okay oh there we are sorry robert stevenson made several innovations in locomotive design in order to achieve these things right let's try those words so we've got uh, we've got surprises robert stevenson made several surprises in locomotive design made surprises in locomotive design now nah, doesn't really make sense does it made several tinkerings well, he did, I suppose, tinker with locomotive design. So it kind of works, but tinkerings are little changes. And look at the text. It says that it was a revolutionary design. Would you say it was revolutionary if he just made tinkerings to get there? I'm not sure. I don't think it's necessarily wrong, but I'm not really convinced by it. Made several new. He made several new in locomotive design. Several new, no, new is an adjective. He made several, needs to be a noun, several somethings. New is wrong. Made several improvements in locomotive design. That fits really well. He made several better in locomotive, made several better in locomotive design. Better is also an adjective, we need a noun. So it's tinkerings or improvements. Uh, it was a revolutionary design, so I think we can go with improvements. Okay. And indeed, um, the word innovations is, yeah, it does pretty much mean improvements. Yeah, it means new ideas, things done for the first time, innovations. Okay, we're really flying here, we're almost there. Uh, we just got to do 25 and 26, two more of these questions. The following questions relate to the kinds of words used in the text. 
what type of word is previous in line 74? So we look at line 74. Ho, ho, ho. There we are. In previous steam engines. Okay, remember that? In previous steam engines. Right. So, previous steam engines. So, previous is describing the steam engines, isn't it? Um, so, you could say, what other things could go there? In noisy steam engines, in old steam engines, in ridiculous steam engines, in exciting steam engines. These are all adjectives. Previous really works as an adjective. That's what it's going to be. Check the others. It's not a verb. Nothing's being done. It's not an adverb. It's not describing how a verb happens. Um, um, it's uh, do, 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 do. no. It's not. A, it's not a preposition because it's not describing things being where things are. Uh, but it isn't saying then. It isn't saying next to or besides or on top of. And it's not a pronoun. It's not he, she, whatever. So, adjective. Here is a sentence from the text. Okay, oh, we don't need to flick through to the text for this one. Great. Um, besides making the locomotive more powerful and efficient, this had side benefits such as allowing it to be ready for work quietly, quickly from a cold start. Whoa, wordy. Okay. But we're just looking at parts of speech. Which group of words taken from this sentence, okay, so it's how they're used here, does not contain an adjective? So, side, ready, cold. Cold start, cold is an adjective. Making powerful side, okay, powerful, making the locative more powerful and efficient, making the locative more big, making it more green. Powerful is an adjective, it's a word that describes the locomotive. We're looking for one that does not contain an adjective. Besides the efficient, efficient, making the locative more powerful and efficient, the efficient locomotive, the noisy locomotive, efficient is an adjective. Besides benefits quickly. Besides making the locomotive, so it is uh, besides, it is beside the point. It is beside the box. It's a preposition. It describes the location of something in relation to something else. Benefits, okay? This had side benefits. It had, it had side benefits. It had um, lots of puppies. It had a box of fresh strawberries, okay? Noun phrases. Um, benefits are nouns. It had these things. Quickly, while well, that really looks like an adverb, it's such as allowing it to be ready for work quickly. How is it ready? It was ready quickly. So none of these are adjectives. D is going to be an answer. Let's just check the last one quickly. Um, making, besides making, allowing cold. Cold start, we've had that ready, it's an adjective. So the only one without an adjective is D. And that's it. We've covered all the questions. As Divya says, you should probably look at the text as cold might be someone's name. Um, well, it isn't because it doesn't have a capital letter at the beginning. Um, but also we have looked at the text. We looked at it for A and we see that cold was cold start, a cold start. So um, cold is an adjective describing start. You should definitely look at the text, but we did. Um, okay, great. Let's go on to the tip of the week. Strawberry cloud is there already with a mnemonic. Necessary. Never ever create extra sticky sauce. Never ever create extra sticky sauce. I like that one. Two sleeves and one collar. Yes, although I would say one collar, two sleeves to get them the right way around. Those are good. Are they your own? Have, did you come up with them yourself? If you did, they are pen worthy. Could you be honest and just write a comment to let me know? And in fact, if you did come up with themselves yourself, then send me a message through the website and I will, um, in fact, send me a message through the website and include the mnemonic in your message as a reminder and I'll share it, um, yeah, I'll share the winning ones uh, in a comment under the video for people to enjoy. That's really good. I really like never ever create extra sticky sauce. Yeah, really good. Um, okay. That's really memorable. And yeah, one collar, two sleeves. Also memorable. Um, Apple got all of today's questions right. That's fantastic. Well done. Um, Dreamy the Half Fox Girl, what did you say to me from before? You're not listening. I said, uh, because you were really brave in, in stimulating a really good point from me, I hope, um, because you boldly put a wrong answer in the comments, I just thought arbitrarily I'll send you a pen. So if you let me know a name and address to post a, an easy 11 plus pen to, 
I will send you an easy 11 plus pen, but don't post it here because it's your private information. Send it as a message through the contact form on the RSL Educational website. Um, Hannah says, because big elephants can always understand small elephants. Nice. I like that. Again, if that really is your own invention, send me a, a message and I will send you a pen. Uh, Fadi, easy eleven plus is the best. Easy eleven plus is the best. I don't know what that what word that helps me to spell, but I'm very grateful for the sentiment. Thank you. Um, necessary two coffees, two sugars. Um, so many things to say about that. Um, I will let you think about it. Um, big elephants can't always enter small exits. Big elephants can't can't always enter small. Big elephants can't always enter small. Because have I missed something there? Um, right, uh, the comments are going past too quickly. Please don't post your comment more than once because I'm, I've missed several people's uh, mnemonics here because um, they've gone past the top of the screen because people are reposting the same comments again and again. Big elephants can't always enter small exit. No, sorry. Uh, you've actually spelt it wrong with that mnemonic. Can't always enter? I don't think so. Miniature. Many imps need interesting axolotls to undergo reality experience. I love the words in that, but I don't think it's very memorable. Ne it doesn't really make sense as a sentence. They need interesting axolotls. I know, I mean, probably you all know what an axolotl is. It's a kind of um, baby salamander that gets stuck as a big baby and becomes like an adult baby, um, interestingly. Um, you've probably seen them in an the aquarium. It doesn't really have anything to do with undergo reality experience. So just putting random words together isn't enough. It has to be a memorable sentence that kind of fits together. Aggressive. Two growls, two slithers. I don't know what the connection is between a growl and a slither. A grumpy gorilla ran excitedly, startling some interested virtuous elephants. But why are they virtuous? I'm not sure it's quite as good as the others. I'm being a bit picky here because otherwise you could just put any words together and, and it would be a mnemonic. Um, big elephants can't always enter small exits. Stop posting that again and again, please, Sanvi. Um, yeah, people, I did say, please stop. Don't post your thing several times. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to not give pens to people who post the comment loads of times because it stops other people uh, getting their chance. Um, And again, people are posting mnemonics that don't actually spell the word correctly. Loads of people are doing this. Come on, people. Um, <sighs> Dreamy, you're pushing it here. Every time, I've now told you twice in the lesson how to send me the address and name. I've said, go to the contact form on the RSL Educational website. How are you going to do the 11 plus if you can't follow a simple instruction like that and have to ask me, do I post it in the descriptions? Ah! Um, come on, people. Please use your brains. Don't just ask questions about thinking. Um, it's a bad, bad way of approaching 11 plus. Um, okay, I'm going to look at a few more, um, but everyone's just posting again and again, and it's starting to wind me up. Uh, sorry if you had a good one, but um, I can't see them for all the reposts. Um, miscreants indulge in stealing, but then you've got two eyes next to each other, so that doesn't match the word. Um, apples carried carefully or mad mice are dead or troublesome is now that's complete not doesn't make sense as a sentence so it's not much use as a mnemonic flamboyant eating bananas rising upwards and rural yogurt but it, again the sentence doesn't make sense so you wouldn't remember it it'd be easier just to remember how to spell the word if it would be easier if it would be if it would be easier just to remember the correct spelling then your mnemonic isn't useful it has to be something memorable okay like one collar, two sleeves. You just imagine a shirt, shirt, you remember one collar, two sleeves. And so you've got the one C and two S's from necessary. That's an example because you can vision it's easier to remember than the spelling. All these ones that are harder to remember than the spelling. What's the point of them? Um, OK. Always make apple tart extremely unbelievably sweet. Maybe would you say extremely unbelievable? I guess. But then why sweet? Apple tart, extremely unbelievably, and then you say sweet, so that'd be amateos. 
which is not the word you're trying to spell. Check them before you... People, you haven't, obviously haven't thought about these before the lesson because they don't even spell the correct word. Um, big elephants catch an underpants sitting eagerly. But why would they catch an underpant and why would the underpant be sitting? And why is the underpant eager? So many questions. Um, Sadia, Kayum, you have the idea. Rhythm has your two hips moving. Exactly, that's what rhythm does, and it gives the spelling. So that's how a mnemonic works. Thank you. That's right. You can have a pen. Um, right, just a couple more. Um, quite a lot of people still not getting this. Um, Yeah, look, if you posted one that didn't make sense the first time, don't just edit it a bit and repost it. You you didn't prepare it before the lesson, so, you know. Right. Last one. Um, someone's, like, someone's still, like, after 10 minutes, posting a mnemonic for happened that doesn't spell happened. Guys, what are you doing? You're posting mnemonics to remember the spellings of words and you're misspelling them in the mnemonics. Uh. Okay, I'm going to call a day to this. There was, have been a few really good ones, but I can't believe how much utter rubbish there is here. People, this is terrible. These are gen generally awful mnemonics. I shouldn't be saying this to you. I should be encouraging you. I should be saying you're all wonderful. You're superstars. You're going to ace your 11 plus. You're going to ace life. People, if this is the best you could do, you're going to fail your exams badly. Come on. At least make your mnemonics spell the word correctly and vaguely make sense as a sentence. Is that too much to ask? Oh dear. Right. Briefly, let's have a few of... Oh yeah. A few of your questions. Have we got any good questions here? And please, no more mnemonics. I'm not going to hand out any more pens for them. Um, they're driving me mad. I kind of regret setting this task. I hope you do better than this at your school homework. <clears throat> okay. Even any... Are there any more? 11 plus master, why not mine? Uh, either I didn't see it amongst all the dross, or it was itself dross. I don't know. Um, please, I'm not, I'm not going to give prizes for any more mnemonics, because I want to see whether people have any questions to post. So don't bother posting any more than people. I'm going to ignore them. Sanvi, what are you doing for your next lesson? Is a good question. And I think it's going to be either some reasoning or some creative writing. Okay? If I do creative writing, I might do something like um, first sentences or how to end a story well. I think you're doing one of those two things. That'd be lots of sh little short things in the worksheet rather than a big writer story task. So that's quite likely that's kind of forming in my mind as a lesson plan. Um, what is the difference between the CEM and GE and GL questions? Well, it does depend on the particular school and on the region. Um, sometimes we have a different number of options for a question. The exam structure differently, so CEM bundles up all its maths in a section called numerical reasoning, along with some other things sometimes, but basically that's a maths section. Um, some schools, more often ones that set the GL, also set a writing task, but that's relatively rare. There's not that much difference, to be honest. You're pretty much learning the same exam still skills and the same syllabus. Um, and then sometimes in some areas they set some written tasks as well as some multiple choice or instead of that's more likely to be set by GL. But at the end of the day, the school you're applying for will tell you what kind of questions you're going to be set. So I just wouldn't worry about it too much. This GL CEM thing is overblown. It's not that important. Um, in comprehension, can you use a picture for bits of evidence? That's a good question. So if there's a picture in, on, in the text. Um, uh, yeah, but, but, but it's actually a really good question. Generally, you're going to be basing your answers on the text. I would expect the question to give you a hint that you that you look at the picture for this question that you're dealing with. If that's the case, that was badly put. If you're allowed to use the picture, I expect I would expect the question to give you a hint that you are, um, or the information at the top of the of the top of the text. Generally, if you aren't told to use the picture, you're best ignoring it because it might actually it might just be a picture they chose, a bit of clip art, a stock photo, which doesn't actually really match the text. Uh, yeah, great question, really good question. Um, 
Parminder, can you convert your EZ11 bus SIEM to MP3? Um, I mean, it is an MP3 when I use it, but that's not so much use to you. Um, I can't share it with you if that's what you're asking, because I have actually, it is a piece that someone else composed and that I have paid for the right to use. So I, I, but I don't have the right to share it around on the internet, I'm afraid. Um, Ferduzi, my most sent you message on Messenger. Is it possible for you to see it? Uh, yes, I will have a look. Um, but tomorrow, I think, um, I, it's more likely. How long does it take to do all four tests? Depends on the exam. Um, when are you going to do another MVR live within the next few weeks? Uh, I'm not looking at more mnemonics, however much you ask. How, how much vocab do you need to learn? How long is this piece of string? Um, I mean, you need to be looking out for opportunities to pick up vocab as you read, as you as people talk. So when you come across a word you're not familiar with, learn it, find out what it means and learn it. If you keep, if you always do that, you will improve your vocab. Um, but the really important skill is to have intelligent methods for dealing with words that you don't know so well. And that will actually be the most useful thing for your exam. How many words do you need to know? Not meaningful. I mean, you could, you could learn 10,000 um, you could learn 10,000 chemical engineering terms and none of them will turn up in your 11 plus exam. So it's not about the number, it's about how relevant they are. And the best way to find out whether a word is relevant is whether you actually hear it and whether you come across it uh, in stuff that you do and things that you read and so on. If you're a chemical engineer, then those chemical engineering words become very relevant. Um, you know what, I'm gonna wrap up in a second because we're going on quite a while. Can you do description, can you answer description creative writing? I'm afraid I don't know what that word, what that question means. You've posted the same question again and again, but without actually making it make sense. People, is it a summer thing? Um, it's like there's mnemonics, terrible mostly, apart from the good ones, but they were few and far between. Um, thank you again for giving me a license, Robert. I haven't given you a license. I've just said that I can send you a pen. A license to do what? A license to have a pen. <laughs> um, okay. Um, could you make a reading list for the 11 plus? I'm not really an expert on modern children's and young people's books. It's not really my strong point. So I'm not the best person to do a reading list, but there are lots of other really good reading lists out there online. You can find them by Googling for one thing. Um, can you make descriptive writing videos? Yeah, there are loads of them. Look on the channel. I've got gazillions of descriptive and creative writing videos. Have a look at them. And yeah, as I mentioned, I will probably do another live next week. Okay, people, that's enough for this week, I think. Let's call it a day. It's been fantastic to have you here. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday evening at six o'clock, probably for some creative descriptive writing, as Yathath is requesting. Um, but whatever it is, I hope it's useful and I hope you're here. Um, don't come up with any more mnemonics. It's not your strong point, clearly. Um, <laughs> goodness me, people. How could your mnemonics be so bad, by and large? How is that possible? Oh, I should be encouraging you, but it's not possible. Sometimes the work is just too bad. You've got to say it as it is. Um, God, my brain. What have you done? Is it the heat or is it my students? Hope you've learned something useful about multiple choice comprehension. I'll see you next Tuesday at six o'clock. Explore the links in the video description. There are loads of fantastic people. Uh, fantastic people. No, you're the fantastic people. There are some fantastic resources there, including free ones. Please invite your friends along to these wonderful, if slightly confusing, easy 11 plus lessons. And I will see you next time. In the meantime, click on this video here, which will be a really good thing to study next. I think actually I'll link the video in which I look at the next things in the paper, which are the spelling and grammar tasks. That'll be a natural way to carry on. Okay, people, go away and contemplate your sins and study hard. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>